before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. And let us enter into his courts with praise. Let us be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Come on, for the Lord is good. Your spirit should bear witness right there. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. I invite you to stand on your feet. We're going to praise our God. For truly he is awesome.
somebody somewhere open up your mouth and just give God thanks and praise for every single thing that he has done in your life and everything that he shall do we honor you this evening speak to us oh God Lord we pray tonight that we be hearers not only but Lord help us to be doers of your word those things that we hear we will do we give you praise now. We give you glory now. Come on, can you do me a favor? Just wherever you are, just take a few seconds, open up your mouth and give them praise in the room. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on. Come on, open up your mouth and feel the atmosphere tonight. Come on, let heaven hear you. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Just want to say, thank you. you get the glory, you get the glory, you give the praise, you get the praise, you give the honor, you take the honor. I just want to say, thank you. You get the glory, you get the glory, you give the praise, you get the praise, take all of the honor, you take the honor. I just want to say, thank you. a beautiful thing to be able to just reflect on every opportunity you have to be thankful just for today anybody just grateful that one you got breath in your body two that somebody else didn't have to dress you anybody just grateful and thankful that God has been good to you he's been faithful to you he's kept his word concerning you he brought you from here to there and from there to here. Can you do me a favor? Can you put your hands together? Let's thank God for our worship and arts team. We celebrate you. Woo. Well, somebody clap your hands and open up your mouth and give God praise in the room. You may be seated. You may be seated all over the room. Um, I know that, that sometimes in, in these moments when we come together for, um, for corporate worship, and when we come together uh, for moments of just reflection and, and to hear what it is that the Lord has to say, sometimes things can become so routine that, that we forget that it is because of the Lord's mercy. And um, every time we come into God's house, we owe him our praise. We owe him our adoration regardless of how rough the day has been, regardless of the circumstances that we face. He is certainly deserving of our adoration and our thanksgiving and our worship. And so tonight it is a privilege and it is an honor uh, to be with y'all. Well, everybody good? Y'all all right? Amen. Y'all, you know, y'all making me nervous. I don't know. I don't know if something happened or I didn't know if something, you know, we, <laughs> um, we're, we're coming off the heels of um, Resurrection Sunday. Um, God blessed us in such a tremendous way. And I'm grateful and thankful that he rose for, for you and for I. And um, so do me a favor, if you're close to somebody, just lean over and tell them, I'm glad you're here tonight. Come on, tell them, I'm glad you're here tonight. And um, we celebrate God for those who are on Facebook and YouTube, uh, wherever you are tonight that you are watching us and streaming. Uh, certainly we honor the Lord and we are grateful and thankful um, to have you as a part of our online uh, community tonight. Uh, do me a favor, uh, text somebody and tell them jump online. It's time for uh, worship and the word. One more time, can we celebrate God for our praise team? Come on, let's celebrate God for them. Yeah, yeah, we celebrate God for them tonight. All right, I'm going into the word of the Lord. If you all would join me in the New Testament. Uh, tonight we're in the New Testament, and I want to look at the uh, book of Philippians. This is uh, Paul's letter uh, to the church at Philippi, and um, many different 
conversations that he records within uh, these very short four but profound verses chapters rather here in the book of Philippians and so tonight um, we are going to look at Philippians chapter 3 and um, I believe that God will speak to us and um, in the actually why don't we now let's do this uh, in the context uh, or in um, respect of time let's let's read verse 10 and 11 um, but we'll reference the previous verses and so I do encourage you all to when you get an opportunity um, take some time and really it's a very short chapter uh, take you just a few moments to read through it all but uh, I do encourage you to take some time and, and to read uh, through this Philippians, the third chapter. But Philippians 3 and 10, uh, the apostle says, I want to know Christ. Anybody want to know Christ? Somebody talk to me. Anybody want to know Christ? Um, he says, I want to know Christ. Uh, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Verse number 10, the apostle says, um, I want to know Christ and I want to know the power of his resurrection and participation. I want to become a part of his suffering and sacrifice. And so tonight I want to talk to you from the idea um, resurrection power. Somebody say that with me, resurrection power. I want you, if you're on Facebook and if you're on YouTube, just type in the comment section, resurrection power. Um, as I said, this past Sunday, um, all across our country, we took some time to really think about, to celebrate, to be grateful for the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. And uh, I am so thankful and so grateful that, um, that death could not hold him. Um, that the plot of man and the scheme of man uh, could not keep him down, uh, but that he got up on the third day, look at somebody and tell him, with all power. Yes, he got up with, with all power, the resurrection power. You and I, we have the ability, we live in the power of the resurrected one. And um, what a powerful and profound thing it is uh, to be able to have the benefit of Christ's sacrifice. Um, we, although yes, we were all born into sin, uh, we were born after the works of the cross. And so we don't know really what it is uh, to be without the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Um, we, we don't know what it is to not be able to speak to God for ourselves. We, we don't know what it is to have to uh, depend on the high priest to get our prayers and petitions right. We, you, you ought to look at somebody and say, thank God for that. We, we, we don't know what it is to have to make our own sacrifices, our own annual atonement for forgiveness and sin. Y'all have never had to bring a bull to the temple and slaughter him on the altar so that God won't stop your heart from beating. You ought to tell them thank you for that. We don't know, we don't know what that is to have separation between God to where when we call him, we can't hear him or he doesn't respond. We don't know what it is because um, we have been raised, we have been birthed, we exist after the work of the cross. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I don't have to worry about what it is uh, to not be able to speak to him that when I call on him, he answers me. Is there anybody who's grateful and thankful that when you call on Jesus, he answers each and every one of your prayer? We are the, benefici we are the beneficiaries of, of what I'd like to call the resurrection power, the power of the resurrection. Um, and tonight I want to talk to you about that because um, his resurrection is, 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 is so important and so vital for each and every one of our lives and to understand the kind of power that we possess through him uh, it is so detrimental, it is so profound for us. And so tonight we're going to talk about the, uh, the resurrection power uh, of Jesus Christ. And so there are three things that I want to look at tonight and uh, we're going to go through this quickly. I pray that you would talk 
back to me and let's, um, let's work this out. Uh, there are, are three what I believe are, are immediate benefits uh, to each and every one of our lives as a result of Christ's resurrection. And, and the, these benefits are so important, it is what the enemy was trying to keep us away from. This is, this is what the devil thought he was going to be able to stop in your life. This, this is what hell did not want to see for you and for your neighbor and for myself. And um, so when we get excited about the fact that we serve a resurrected Savior, a Savior uh, that literally um, robbed death, it, it is a, it, it's a very interesting thing because um, they were trying to rob him and he ended up robbing death. And um, you, anybody ever... Um, Anybody ever watch the Ocean's 11 series, Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12? Uh, I think there's an Ocean's 13 as well. Um, I, I love watching movies when I get the time to watch them. And the, the Ocean series is one of those series that um, is, a, is a very um, interesting series for me because of the, how they write the narrative for Ocean's. Um, what they do is they tell you the plot in the beginning and so they show you how the movie ends in the first, like, 20 seconds, you, you, you see, and then they reverse the clock and show you all of the plots and the plans and all of the details that went into getting them to that place. So you see how it ends, and then you go through this process, and you understand how it is that they got there. And um, when, we, when we look at the resurrection, it, it's better to look at it through a lens of like an Ocean's Eleven movie because we, we know the plot. We, we, know, we know the good news. We know how the story ends. The story ends with him getting up early one Sunday morning, right? Um, but to understand how we got to that point, you've got to trace the steps of Jesus back to understand that there was so much that went into the resurrection. There was so much that God had to do to make sure um, that he got him to that place. Jesus even said it. He said, I, I wish that, um, that I didn't have to go through this experience. I wish that, it, that I had the ability to just escape this. Um, but then he says, but I realize that if I be lifted up. See, there's some things in your life you just have to go through. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's some things that you just have to go through. There's some things that is just necessary for you to be able to go through. There are some experiences that we wish we could change, but if we, cho if we chose to change those experiences, it would change everything about us because those experiences are part of the building blocks that make us who we are today. We've learned in the process. And so uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is important important for us to understand the building blocks, the nuances, to understand the benefits of the resurrection. And so here now, the Apostle Paul uh, uses this third chapter of Philippians to talk to the church, and a huge part of this conversation uh, that he's having with the church in the book of Philippians is the importance of being careful uh, not to be so confident in yourself that that you don't engage God within your life. He says, I, I, I want you to be very careful not to put any confidence in this flesh. And, um, you know, look, look at your neighbor say, be confident, but not too confident. Yeah, he, he says, he says I, I want you to be careful that you don't get to a place in your life where you feel as though you don't need God. See, one of the most dangerous things for us is to arrive at a place where we feel as though we can do it on our own, that, that we, can, we can solve our own problems and we can answer our own challenges and, and we don't need to pray and we don't need to fast and we don't need to come to church and we don't need to seek the Lord. He, he says, be very careful because there are people who started with him but became so confident in their own abilities that they feel as though they no longer need him. And he said the most deceiving thing that you could ever go through in life is to allow the enemy to make you feel as though you no longer need God. I don't know about you, but every single day I live, I need him more than I needed him the day before. Is there anybody in the sanctuary online that can say, I know I need the Lord. If, 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 if I 
I don't have his help, if I don't have his provision, if I don't have his direction, if I don't have his instruction, I won't make it. I won't be able to do the things that he's calling me to do. Look at somebody say, I need him. I need him. So the Apostle Paul is talking about the importance of not putting confidence in ourself, but he also talks about not putting confidence in other people. Um, because sometimes people mean well, they really do. Um, but, but because people are not perfect, they do have the ability to let you down. Because, because they have their own circumstances and their own, their own challenges and, and their, their own uh, goals and their own experiences, um, sometimes you are not the focus of their universe, and, and, and if you are not careful, um, you, you, can, you can miss God uh, trying to engage people and, 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 and being so self or, or interdependent rather on other individuals. That if, if they don't come to your aid, if they don't pick up their phone, if, if they don't give you audience, if they don't pay you any attention, it's just like you, you, you can't exist. And he said, be very careful um, not to put confidence in, in, in self and not to be confident so much in other people that they become your God. See, because there, 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 there are times in which, if we be honest, we have put people in God's place. And um, instead, of, instead of talking to God, we got to talk to them. And instead of, instead of looking for God to do it, we've got to look for them. And he said, be, be very careful um, that you don't become so confident in yourself or confident in other people um, that you overlook God's place in your life. And, and Moses tells us something about the character of God, uh, which I think is something that should not be taken lightly. Uh, but Moses says, as amazing as God is, he says, God is jealous. I don't, I don't know if you've ever been with somebody who's been jealous before. I don't, I don't know if you've ever had a friend who's been jealous before. I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a jealous streak you know, jealousy causes people uh, to behave in some strange ways. Je jealousy has a way to pull certain attributes out of folk that, that you'd be like, I didn't even know that was in there. Some, some of y'all have been stung by the sting of jealousy. Jealousy has a way of showing up in places and in spaces uh, that you didn't even realize or anticipate. And he says, I want you to understand something. He says, God is very jealous when it comes to you. God loves you so much that that he won't even suffer you to give his affection to another. He's a very jealous God like that. God is, God is not a God who is okay with polygamy. He is, he is not a God who is okay with sharing the spotlight and sharing attention. God is not okay with being a part-time kind of presence in your life. He is very jealous and very envious in that way. Matter of fact, uh, he will remove anything that dares to take his place in your life. He's, he's jealous. He'll shut doors down. He'll close opportunities. He'll ruin relationships. He'll snatch folk from places that they were never supposed to be in the first place. Tell somebody he's jealous. Yeah, you, 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 you've got to be very careful because God God, it is part of his character. It's part of his nature. Moses tried to warn us about this. He said, be very careful. God is good, but he's jealous. And he will not allow his glory to go to someone else. He, he will not allow the attention, the affection, the love uh, to be split among other individuals. That, that's why uh, when he gave Moses the law, he said, there will be no other gods before me. No, 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 we won't, we won't do that. I, I, know, I know the world is, is in a very weird place where people are sharing other people and it's five and six people in a relationship and God said, no, 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 we're not doing none of that. Either you're going to have me or you ain't going to have nothing. I'm a very jealous God. And, and so this is why, why Paul says, he says, it is important that God 
be priority in your life. That we do not put material things before him. That we do not put our own personal agendas before him. That, that we don't put other people before him. That we don't put ourselves before him. You know, and the reality is that some of us, we have been guilty of this, whether it was intentional or unintentional at times in our life. We, we, if we be honest, we can acknowledge and see where sometimes God was not the priority for us. I mean, we, we, we loved him and he was there. He, we, he just wasn't the first thing on the list. Um, when we got to it, we got to it, right? When we, when we talked to him, we talked to him. And, and when we came to church, well, we came to church. Um, and, and, and the apostle says here, it is important for us to have a, 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 a primary relationship with God where nothing comes before him. Somebody say amen. And so uh, Paul says, uh, I want you all to understand that if, if anybody were to be self-confident or to feel as though they didn't need God, he said, um, I probably would be one of those candidates. He says, when you look at my history and my pedigree and my legacy and where I've come from, I'm, I'm a, among the elite I'm born of the, the first tribe. I'm, I'm one of the elite. I'm Hebrew of Hebrew. I can, I can speak it with the best of them. He says, I'm a part of the aristocrats. I'm, I'm, a, part, I'm a part of all of that. And, 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 and he says, in all of those things, I count it as dung. Cow doo-doo, that's what he says. I, I count it, it's poo-poo. It, it, it means nothing. It means nothing. He says, he says there, there, there's no need to be arrogant because all of those things, when uh, aligned with the greatness of God, means nothing. And so he says, now we, we get to this place that he says, now whatever I have gained, I now consider as a loss for the sake of Christ. And he says, and now here is what I want in my life more than anything else. I don't want to know church. I want to know him. I, I, don't, I don't want to know titles and, and politics and, and all kinds of gossip. I, I want to know him. I, I, I'm not coming here to, to meet other people. I'm coming here because my focus in this season of my life is that I might know him. Because there are a lot of people who come to church and don't know him. He says that there, there, there are folk that you worship with that, that love him but don't know him. There, there, there are people who look like they know him. And they know a lot of things. But they don't know him. And the Apostle Paul says, in this season of my life, while, while I have great educational training. I've, I've been trained by some of the, the top philosophers of, of the day, but I realize that I don't know him as much as I need to. And he says, there, there is something that I want to know about him. It's not just this general idea that, oh, I want to know God. But he says, but more specifically, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. He says, I, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. And that's what I want to talk to you tonight about the resurrection power that each and every one of us must know him in the power of his resurrection. And so the power of his resurrection, one, I want you all to write this down. The power of his resurrection is the power to revive. Somebody say revive. 
the power of his resurrection. When we think about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and when we think about what that means for us as believers, the benefit that we walk away from, one of the things uh, that we have to be able to, to raise our hands in adoration and praise is, is that the resurrection shows us that God, God is able to bring back to life things that seem or appear to be dead. That God is able to revive. He is able to breathe life into things that look like they have no hope, no future. God is able to revive. God is able to revive relationships. God is able to revive families. God is able to revive dreams. God is able to revive futures. God is able to revive people. That is part of the power of his resurrection. He says this is so profound because as a believer, you must walk in the power of his resurrection. And that means that there is nothing in your life that God cannot revive. Here is what he asked the prophet in the Old Testament. He says, can these dry bones live? But, but he, he had not heard of the resurrection because the resurrection had not come yet. And he said, I don't know if these bones could live. Only you know if they can live or not. But, but now we have a different response to this because we live now in the power of his resurrection. And so the question is, can the things in your life that seem like they have died, can the relationships in your life that seem like they have stalled, can they yet live again? And the answer is yes, through the power of his resurrection. Because, because you exist in the power of his resurrection and because you know that God is able to revive, to resuscitate, to bring back to life, it is good news for each and every one of you because it means that failure is no longer fatal. Look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, failure is not fatal. You, you, you live in the power of his resurrection, which means that God is able to breathe life into things that seem like they have failed and stalled. God is able to breathe life into stuff. That, that's why you can't give up so easy because you live in the power of his resurrection. Some of you are recipients of his resurrection. You should be dead by now, but he breathed new life into you. And because he breathed into you, because he breathed upon you, you are here. You're able to say it's in him that I live and that I move and that I have my being because the God I serve is able to revive. If it didn't work the first time, I can believe God for his ability to bring back to life. And, and so this is what makes our confession different than, than, than some others because um, one of the, 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 the benefits of the resurrection is, is that we serve a God who is able to revive. Do y'all remember when he stood outside of Lazarus' tomb? Lazarus was in the tomb and he had been dead and he had been embalmed and his body had started to decay and there's all kinds of people that are outside and, and, and his sisters Mary and Martha, they're out there crying and, and acting a fool and, and, and they're mad at Jesus because they said, how could you? We called on you and you didn't show up. We, we told you Lazarus was sick and it seemed like you weren't even concerned concerned about him and and Jesus has to remind them of something uh, because this was before the resurrection and he says I'm going to forgive you because you have not heard yet because it hasn't happened yet but I'm going to give you a preview of the end of this he says I am the resurrection I am the resurrection in life. I, I, I am the resurrector of things. When, when I speak, things move. When, when I speak, things start to change. When, when I speak, 
death has to take his hands off of the circumstance. When I speak, sickness has to bow. When, when I speak, I don't care. The natural order of things have to be reordered according to the words that leave my mouth. I am the resurrection. And as long as I say it, it must come to pass. Resurrection power is, is the reality uh, that he possesses the power to revive. And in this season of our life, I believe that what God wants to do is God wants to revive some dreams that have been on life support. God wants to revive some visions uh, that you haven't seen in a very long time. God wants to bring back to life some promises that have been spoken over your life. Somebody ought to open up your mouth and say, Lord, revive it, revive it, revive it, revive it. It's not too late. It's not over. It's not finished. God is a God who is able to possess the power to bring it to pass. Re resurrection power means that God is able to revive. The second thing that it means is, is that not only is God able to revive, but God is able to restore. Now, revival and restoration are, are two very different things because revival speaks to something that is dead, something that 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 has been put in the never going to happen again list. It, it's it's done with. Uh, God's able to bring back things. He's able to do impossible things in your life. Has any, has anybody ever seen God do the impossible in your life? Something that other people said ain't never going to happen is not possible. Uh, you, you'll never see it. You'll never get it. You'll never have it. You'll never be it. You'll never do it. And then here comes God. And see, that's why people don't understand why you praise the way you praise because they don't know the stuff that God has revived in your life. They, they don't know how many times you've heard it's never going to happen and then boom, it happened. They, they don't understand any of those things. And so we praise God because he's able to revive. But, but to restore means to look at something and to make it better than it is. God is not just able to, to revive, but God is able to restore. God is able to take a situation, a person, a thing, a, a season, uh, a, a, a state, uh, outlook, um, an emotional feeling, and God is able uh, to make it better than it has ever been in your life. And maybe it's not dead, but it, it does need some improvement. You, There are some things in your life that you wish got a little bit better. Anybody in here got something in your life that you wish was just a little better than what it is right now? It, it may not even be bad, but I, I just wish it was a little better. It, 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 it may be something that somebody else may tear up this church if they had it, but, but I believe that God is able to improve even this, that God is able to make it better. He is able to restore. And, and that is one of the things that God does in our life as we serve him and as we trust him. He is a God who is able to take what we have and improve it in ways. There, there are some times in your life that God does some things and, and you don't think it could get better than this. And then it gets better. You, you, God, God takes you to places and he takes you to heights and, and you think, okay, this is it. And then God has a whole nother thing that he wants to show you. This is why the Bible says, um, now unto him who is able to do still exceedingly and abundantly above anything you could hope, imagine, or think, why, according to the power, that resurrection power that works in you. And, and when you have resurrection power in your life, God gives you the power to make better. Right? The, the, there, 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 there's something wrong if between now and the end of the year you don't become better. A, a, better, a better husband, a better mother, a better parent, um, a, a better steward of the things that, that you have, a, a better worshiper, a better praiser, a, a better prayer, that, that God in his ability is able to take something and make it better. Somebody say better. God is able to, to restore. God is able to renew. God is able to improve. He's able to build upon the things that you bring him. And that's one of the things that I love about God because whatever you bring him, he always finds a way to restore it, to make it 
better, to, to give it a new purpose and, and, and to give it a new look and, and to give it a, a, a new, it, it, they, 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 they were hungry. There were 5,000 folk out there, not including women and children. And Jesus says, listen, um, does anybody have anything to eat? And they said, um, only thing we got is a couple pieces of fish and a couple loaves of bread. Uh, but he said, but, but I'm, I, I can improve that if you just bring me what you have, I can take it and I can make it better and they brought them they said it ain't a whole lot it's just a couple pieces of fish and a couple loaves of bread we don't know what you're going to do with this but he said but I'll show you uh, if you just trust me with what you have trust me that I'm able to improve upon it and make it better and they were surprised they were shocked they were overwhelmed by the ability of God to take something that people looked at small and insignificant to take something that everybody else laughed at and said we don't know what you're going to do with that. But because he is able to restore, he was able to take what everybody else had looked over and he was able to make it better. That's what he does with our lives when we present our lives to him. He, he never leaves us in the same fashion that he finds us, but he always finds a way to make us better. I, I, I wish I had somebody in here that knows that if it hadn't been for God who was in my life, if, if it wasn't for his presence in my life, I'd still be somewhere scamming. I'd still be somewhere cussing. I'd still be somewhere clubbing. I'm still, but, but he took my little old life and somehow he made it better. I thought I was doing something by myself. I, I, I thought that I had seen success, but somehow he was able to take all of those things and make them better. It is the resurrection power of God that improves each and every one of our lives. This is why Jesus said, I come that you might have life, watch this, and not just have it, but have it what? More abundantly. I, I, I came that you might not just have life, but I came to improve the life that you have. I didn't come so you could be broke down, busted and disgusted and sad and depressed for the rest of your life. No, you didn't need my help for that. You was doing that on your own. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I came to improve, to enhance, to restore, to build upon the life that you do have. And that's what he wants to do for each and every one of us. But we have to present him our lives. We have to be willing to say, Lord, here am I. And so the power of the resurrection is God's ability to bring back to life. The power of the resurrection is, is God's ability to improve and to make better than it was before. And when you walk in the power of the resurrection, whatever God gives you, you ought to make it better than what he gave it to you. See, there, 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 are, there are some of us who, who that y'all remember, I, I, I taught on this a couple weeks ago on, on the Bible study call uh, that we had, but um, it, it's, it's about the story of the talents, and you all remember in Matthew, uh, he talks about there is a, a master who is getting ready to go on a business trip, and before he goes on a business trip, he, um, he gives talents to his servants, the Bible says, according to their several ability, according to their ability to produce, and to one he gave one, and to one he gave three, and to another he gave five, and so on and so forth. And, and he told them, he said, now, I want to see what you're going to do with this. And, and some of them took what they received and, and they improved significantly uh, to the point where when the master came back, they were able to say, this is what you gave me, but I made it better. This is what I did with it. And, and that is what Jesus' expectation is for each and every one of you. He said, the things that I give you, the things that I bless you with, the things that I entrust into your hands, I'm not just doing it just so that you can manage it and hold on to it or hide it in fear that you're going to mess something up. But I'm blessing you. I'm opening up doors in your life. I'm giving you opportunities and avenues for success so that you can make it 
better so that when I come back, you have a report to give me to say, God, this is what you trusted me with. This is what you gave to me. This is what I was working with. And this is what I was able to do with it. And when that master came back and he found that servant that did nothing with what they had, he said, shame on you. How, how, how is it that I trusted you? to improve upon the situation and still yet you've done nothing. And so it is the power of the resurrection that allows us to walk in the power of revival, the power of restoration, um, but the resurrection power is also God's power to reveal, to reveal. It is God's ability to reveal and um, the, 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 the revelation of God's uh, resurrection is, is this. Prior to this, we had no future. Prior to this, we, 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 had, we had no hope. Um, we, we were sinners in need of saving and our futures had already been determined for us. We were all going to hell in a handbasket. There, 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 there was no hope for us. Um, and because of his resurrection, y'all, y'all hear them sing songs like "Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow." Be, because of his resurrection, there is now a future and a hope for each and every one of us. And yes, the reality is everybody in here does have a past, but here is the hope: everybody also has a future. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have a future too. Come on, tell them. You, you, you have a future, um, and, and that is good news because uh, no matter what the moment is that you are currently experiencing, it is the belief that there is something after this that is going to be better than what I'm experiencing right now in my life, that I, I, I don't have to feel stuck in any situation or circumstance. I, I don't have to feel stuck in any particular emotional state of being. Uh, I have a future that, that because of Jesus Christ, I have not just a hope, but I have a future. I have something that has been promised to me after this. And it is that hope and that future future in which the resurrection reveals unto me that gives me the confidence and the strength to be able to deal with the stuff I'm dealing with today. Some of y'all have been through things in your life that you don't even know how you were able to handle it and deal with it. And the reality is there was something in your soul, whether you knew it or not, that was anchored in the reality that this is not my final conclusion and this is not all that God has for me and this is not the end of my story. But because I serve the God of resurrection power, there is a future beyond this. I can make it through it. If they walk away, I can still make it. If they give up on me, I can still make it. If I lose everything I have tomorrow, I can still make it. If I go to the bank and there's no money there, I can still make it. Whether I have friends or not, I can still make it because God has already secured my future. And this is what the resurrection does. The resurrection uh, looks to reveal our future in him. And, um, and uh, you know, it, it is not just a future beyond the sky. But it is a future also in the here and the now. Yes, I, I know that, that heaven is, is now a reality for us. But he did not just come to transport those from earth to heaven, but he also came to bring heaven to earth that we might have a future here and there. That before this is over, I will see the 
goodness of the Lord, watch this, in the land of the living, that there is something that God is going to do for me before I close my eyes. There are promises that God is going to reveal concerning me. There are things that God is going to manifest in my life, and I cannot die until I see it come to pass. It is, it is the resurrection power of God that seeks to reveal to us the future that God has for each and every one of us. And every now and then in your life, you've got to remind yourself um, that this ain't it. Every, every now and then, you've got to talk to yourself and remind yourself um, that better days have got to come. I wish I was talking to somebody in the room. Every, every, every now and then, you've got to speak over your life and tell yourself, before this story ends, I am going to see the goodness of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the promises and the provisions of God. It is, it is through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that he revives, that he restores, and that he reveals hope unto us. See, you, you, have, 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 has, has God ever, um, in, a, in a midnight season in your life, anybody ever been in a season of just hopelessness or despair? You, you've been in a season where you were in your feelings and it just was like, well, why try? I might as well just give up and throw in the towel. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why I should do this because it seems like everything I'm doing ain't working. And, and this person said that and that person said this. And um, every now and then, God will, will, will place a revelation in your spirit. He'll, he'll, he'll give you a peek of a promise. He'll, he'll, he'll show you just enough to let you know you can't listen to them. You you, you can't afford to give up. You, you've got to keep trying. You've got to keep pushing. You've got to keep believing. You've got to keep pressing because there's something on the other side of this. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, there's something on the other side of this. I, I, I know you have to deal with this right now. I know you got to see this right now. I know you've got to battle this right now. But the good news is that there is something that is on the other side of this. And because there is power in the resurrected one, he's going to help you get the victory in this so that you can get to the places that God has called for you. And so here is what the apostle is talking about when he says that I desire to know him. That, that's my desire. I desire to know him in, in the power of his resurrection. I, I want to see his story as my story. That is, that, is, that is the power of his resurrection. It's one thing to just celebrate his story and to separate yourself or to see yourself disconnected from the story as just a thing as, oh, it's wonderful that, you know, he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Oh, isn't it amazing that uh, on the third day the stone was rolled away and um, he was not there? Isn't it, isn't it phenomenal that God was able to, to put life back in his body. It's, it's one thing to, to do that, but he said it's another thing to know him in the power of his resurrection. It's another thing to not just see it as an independent story that happened in antiquity that you read at times in church uh, when there's a necessary time for reading, but it's another thing to see his story as your story. It, it, it is another thing to, to see his reality as your reality. That, that is what Jesus was trying to teach us. Uh, the, the apostle said, just as God quickened the, 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 the dead body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so is he able to do the same things for you. And when you're able to see his story 
as your story, then you are able to see that God is also able to not just resurrect him, but he's also able to resurrect you no matter what you go through in your life. When you see his story as your story, then you realize that just as he revived the Lord and Savior that we worship and that we praise, I too can expect him to do it in my life as well. That just as he revealed unto him his future, he is still able to reveal unto me the things that I am going through. And so when I read these stories, I don't read them as something that is ancient, something that is old, something that has only happened in times past but when I read it I read it in real time because I realize he's doing it right now for me so that's why sometimes I can open up my mouth and lift up my hands and give God praise even though I'm going through a season that may be dry and dead because I know I serve a God that if he was able to do it for Jesus he still able to do you ought to put your hands on yourself and say he's able to do it for me if he did it for Jesus if he did it for Lazarus if he did it for Bartimaeus if he did it for the woman with the issue of blood if he did it for Zacchaeus if he did it for the man that was at the pool of Bethesda if he did it for anybody else he can do it for me because God is not a respecter of persons I believe right now I'm walking in resurrection power I don't fear what hell can do I don't fear what the devil may say I don't fear what position haters may take I'm living in resurrection resurrection power and because I'm living in resurrection power no weapon formed against me no enemy that stands up before me no challenge that presents itself no adversity that I may feel no part no plan no scheme that may come upon me is going to hinder me because I know him in the power of him tell somebody I know him I know him Oh, I could be depressed, but I know him. I could be sad, but I know him. I could be overwhelmed, but I know him. I could be crying, but I know him. I should give up, but I know him. And I don't just know him, I know him in the power. I know him for myself. They gave up on me, but he resurrected me. I messed up my own life, but he resurrected me. I made some bad decisions, but he resurrected me. He should have left me for dead, but I know him in the power. You ought to look at somebody and say, look at me. I'm proof that he's still resurrecting stuff. If you you want to know if he's still able, look at me. I'm proof that he still restores. If you want to know if he still makes where I'm proof. I'm proof. I'm, I'm... I'm living proof, I'm walking proof, I'm talking proof, I'm, I'm breathing proof. I'm, I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm not telling you what I heard on the internet. I'm telling you what I've seen in my own life. That I may know him. That, that is, he said, I, I, I want to know you in in the power of your resurrection um if you've ever been to a job interview you understand that job interviews um, most of the time what they want is um they want to know um your learned experience and how your learned experience helps you to be able to accomplish the job that they're looking to potentially hire you from. Um, But there there are times in which jobs will change the criteria of their hiring and and they will tell you 
that um, if you haven't been to academia and you you haven't you haven't taken 15 credits in this subject topic, um, there are some jobs who will tell you um, that uh, we will forego the learned experience if you can demonstrate that you have lived experience. And 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 um, I, I realize that there is a very uh, different um, thing between learned experience and lived experience. There, there are people who have learned a whole lot of stuff but haven't had to live any of it. And, and you, can, you, can, you can teach somebody hypothetically about how to handle certain things but it's another thing to have to live through it yourself and have the knowledge of what you have lived through as an endorser of your ability to be able to now handle a specific set of challenges and adversity. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying to the church at Philippians. He says, it is not enough to have learned experience to just read the Bible. And they say, oh yes, I know him. I know, I know him. I know him as Elohim and El Shaddai. And uh, I know him as Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Chishkanu. And I, I, oh yeah, I know him. I, I know him as the Old Testament God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, oh yes, I, I know the story of Noah. And uh, I know what happened to Daniel and the lions. And then yes, yes, I'm aware. I'm aware of, of what, what happened in the New Testament. But it's another thing to have lived experience with God where you're able to say, I know him not because of what I read but I know him because of what I have lived through I, I, oh, oh that's a that's a different kind of knowledge that's that that's a different kind of revelation that that's a different kind of relationship the apostle says that my desire is to develop a lived experience with his resurrection power because you can doubt what you read but you can't doubt what you live see you 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 can doubt that he's a healer if you've never been sick and he's never healed you. You can you can doubt that. You can you can doubt that 100%. But if you've ever been sick before and you knew that nobody but God could do it, I don't care what they tell you. I don't care what they show you. I don't care what they try to sell you. You can't make me doubt them because I know too much about you. The apostle says, my, my desire is to know him through not just learn, but through my lived experience. Out of the abundance of heartbreak and heartache and suffrage and disappointment and rejection and shame and lack and insecurity and insufficiency and loneliness and and confusion that that in all of that i i met god i i i met him in a place in my life where where i was going to throw in the towel i i met him with a drink in one hand and a razor blade in the other hand i i met God in a season of my life where I just knew it was over and then boom the resurrection power of Jesus Christ and so so my my prayer is for us is, is that in this season of our life that that we would um, receive and expect the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that, that we would see 
his power at work in us and through us and, and that we would see God make a way for people that we love, family members and the like, that, that when you give your testimony, it, it's not about what somebody else said, but you'll be able to say, I, I've been there. I've seen it. See, David's account of being able to say uh, not what he heard grandmama, but he says, I was young. And now I'm old. This is, this is lived experience. I, I can say this, and he says, you, 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 you may doubt what you read, but, but take it from me as an eyewitness account. I want to let you know I have never seen the righteous forsaken, and I have never, ever, ever, ever seen the seed of God ever beg for bread. I've got lived experience. I know him for real. I know that he'll make a way. I, I know that he'll open doors. I know that he'll show up in the nick of time. I know that he'll make a way even when there is no way. I, I know that he will. And when you have that kind of intimate knowledge about God the stuff you go through doesn't bother you as much as it used to because you know that the same God who did it before is the same God that I trust him to do it again somebody put your hands together give God praise Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this reminder. We thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you for your ability to revive, for your ability to restore, for your ability to reveal. Now, God, we pray that you do it for us. Father, we pray that you give us our own experiences, our own history with you. We thank you because... Life can take away what we earn, but they can't take away what we know about you. So we thank you that in the midnight hour, we will be able to rest on the foundation of our relationship with you. Thank you for continuing to be consistent down through the ages. We thank you for our ability to always trust and hope in you. Father, I pray tonight that anybody who's on the edge, anybody who's on the ledge, anybody who's at their breaking point, anybody who says, I've had enough and I don't think I can take any more. Father, I pray that tonight before the end of the night that they would come face to face with the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would give them courage, that you would give them hope, that you would give them a renewed sense of strength. I pray, oh God, that you would remind them that victory belongs to them because you gave it to us when you died and rose again. We thank you for these things now. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. Look at somebody say, I got to know them. I got to know them. All right, let's get ready to give. I'm going to release you all. Let's get ready to give tonight. We're getting ready to give tonight. Um, before we leave, we want to, to sow seeds uh, into into God's kingdom and um, into this amazing church. Any, anybody besides me love your church? Anybody love your church? Anybody thank God for your... I thank God for the two people over there that love the church. The rest of us say, oh, I'm not sure about this church. Anybody online tonight, if you love your church, I want you to uh, sow with us tonight. Um, you can give, of course, you can give cash, you can give check. Um, if you're if you're an electronic user and um, you want to give Cash App or Givelify, you can do that tonight. And then, of course, I don't want to leave out anybody who's online, anybody that's online tonight. Join us online uh, in giving on Cash App and uh, Givelify. The information is, is on your screen. Um, we thank you for your support and for standing with us and for sowing into this branch of heaven here on earth and so uh, we we appreciate you tremendously more than words uh, can even uh, describe 
everybody standing everywhere. Here, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to pray. I'm going to give the benediction, and then y'all can come, uh, bring your seed, and then you'll be released. Thank y'all for hanging out with me tonight. I love y'all. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Y'all quiet, but I still love y'all. I still love y'all. Um, I, um, I, was, I was so busy trying to think of so many different things on Easter that I, I forgot, although it was in the announcements, um, I forgot to uh, verbally remind people uh, about uh, Bible study tonight being in person. I know that we do the announcements, but but some of y'all don't be paying attention to them announcements when they're on the screen. Y'all be in the bottom of your bag looking for candy or something. I don't know what y'all be doing, but don't nobody be paying attention. So um, I, I apologize. People text me today. They said, I got a text message and I forgot. I, I scheduled something else, but um, we'll do a better job at, at reminding you all. But if you can, I need y'all to do a better job at paying attention to those announcements that we take a whole lot of time putting together so that you know what's happening, all right? Um, that's not for the people in the sanctuary because clearly y'all heard it. That's for everybody that texts me th today. That's for y'all online. Uh, pay attention. Put that in the chat. No, I'm just messing with y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. All right, let's, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for... Um, we thank you tonight for our ability to still have something left to give. Father, I pray tonight that you would bless every seed and every sower, every gift and every giver. And Lord, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, oh God, I pray that you would watch over us. Father, I pray that you would send angels to cover us as we go to our destinations. Father, by the power that you've given us, we speak to sickness and sad news, and we say you're canceled now. We speak to death and disease, and we say you're canceled. Incidents and accidents, and we say you're canceled tonight. Father, we pray that you would bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you. Come bring your seeds. Amen. We love you. We'll see you on Sunday. For those of you who are online, so you see tonight and join us back here in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. God bless you. Love you.
Thank you.